This is the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. I'm Tim McMaster. Stepping into the cage today, we have Cubs broadcaster Jim Deshays. Jim, thanks so much for taking a few minutes with us. Great to be with you, Tim. My pleasure. All right, fans, you know how it works. You can use the hashtag Chatting Cage on Twitter. Get your questions in that way. You can use the MLB Fans app. Use your questions that way. Or press that Get In Line button on your screen, on your mobile device, or your laptop. Get to us that way, and you can ask your own questions of Jim Deshays. Jim, we're going to start on social media and on the MLB Fans app. Bay Bay wants to know, do you think the Cubs have all the assets to make a late run into October? Uh, absolutely. Uh, they've been the best team in baseball all year long, pretty much going wire to wire. Uh, they check all the boxes. They score plenty of runs. They play outstanding defense. Uh, the pitching has been uh, the best in baseball. The, the rotation uh, has been absolutely brilliant. Um, so, yeah, all the pieces are in part. They've got a great bullpen. Um, but, you know, it's the postseason and, and wacky things happen. But uh, yeah, if you had to handicap uh, the postseason, obviously the Cubs would be the favorite. They certainly would. Uh, the only team in baseball right now with over 100 wins as they cruise into the postseason. Uh, this is the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. You can ask questions of Jim Deshays. We have a fan ready to do that right now. Fan, go ahead, tell us your name, where you're from, and go ahead with your question. Hi, my name is Leo. I'm from San Antonio. And my question is, what was your most memorable called game? The most memorable called game uh, to stand out. The area had a no hitter in Cincinnati, and uh, the other one also took place in Cincinnati. It was the Chris Bryant game, uh, where he set a major league record: uh, uh, three home runs, two doubles in the same ball game. Something that had never been done uh, before. Uh, there's been so many highlights throughout this year, but but off the top of my head, those two really stand out. And, Jim, that's a perfect transition. Back to Twitter we go, and Bocino79 wants to know, do you expect Chris Bryant to win the National League MVP, and if so, why? I, I do. Um, I, I think uh, when the writers look at the body of work, uh, the counting stats, home runs, RBIs, uh, at or near the top of the league, he's been good all year long. Uh, the advanced metrics, wins above replacement, things of that nature, he's, he's uh, top of the list in the National League. Uh, the fact that he's been able to move between third base and the outfield and play both of those at a high level, I think, uh, help his cause. Uh, certainly there are other guys having great years. Anthony Rizzo among them, uh, uh, Daniel Murphy in Washington, uh, the kid Corey Seager in L.A., but uh, I think Bryant's going to win the award, and I think he is a deserving MVP. All right, we go back to social MLB fans app, Jim, and back to your playing days we're going to go. 8 Mile Style wants to know, how do you explain how good your stuff was the day that you struck out the first eight batters of a game to set a major league record? Um, you know, it was pretty good for me. I was never an overpowering guy, so that was, there's some irony that I was able to set a strikeout record. Uh, I had been hurt, so I'd missed a turn, so I had about 10 days off, so I think I was a little fresh for a late September start. Um, and then once I got rolling, um, the adrenaline really kicked in. Um, we were two days away from clinching a division, so there was a lot of energy in the ballpark, and I was able to feed off that. And uh, the Dodgers, uh, you know, they chased a lot of bad pitches, to, to be truthful, in that sequence. So I just kept throwing high fastballs, and I just kept swinging. Uh, but my stuff was pretty good that night. Glad we got to a question into you about your playing days and not just these Cubs. That, that 86 Astros team was uh, very good as well. Obviously a great team all the way to the NLCS against the Mets. We have another fan ready to go now, Jim. Fan, if you can just tell us your name, where you're from, and go ahead with your question. Uh, yeah. Nicole Gantos from Fort Myers, Florida. And um, my question is, um, do you think the Cubs will win the World Series this year? Uh, do I think the Cubs will win the World Series? I think the Cubs have the best chance of any team heading into the postseason to win the World Series. What do you think? Uh, I think we lost her, Jim. God. But <laughs> she she seemed like a, a Cubs fan who I, was pretty confident. I think, I, I, she wanted to, I think she wanted to hear absolutely no doubt about it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, back to social media we go on Twitter. Kimberly Day 88 wants to know, so much has been written and said about David Ross and his impact on the club. What has he added to this Cubs team? You know, uh, just a, a, a wonderful personality. I, he's having a nice year. He's, he's a very good defensive catcher. Uh, obviously, he's paired with John Lester every time John goes out there, and uh, they've been a, an unbelievably good tandem. Um, Lester could very well be the Cy Young Award winner this year, if not him, perhaps Kyle Hendricks. 
But uh, David Ross just brings uh, um, energy to the ballpark every day. He's kind of a, a, a team captain, if you will. He's the guy, if, if players are kind of backing off a little bit, he doesn't see the energy, he doesn't think the approach is right, he's going to let him know. Um, you know, and it, it's always hard to quantify the value of a guy that, you know, that brings that to the table uh, when you talk about things like team chemistry. Uh, but he's as good as any that I've ever been around. Yeah, what a special moment for him on Sunday night as well. He got all the ovations. He hits a home run. They take him from the game, and he gets to kind of walk off into the sunset as far as regular season home games go, although he'll certainly be back at Wrigley for the postseason. All right, Jim, now it's time for our EDJ question of the day, and that is what do you think Harry Carey would say about this Cubs team? Uh <laughs> Well, aside from holy cow, <laughs> you know, uh, he would be he would be over the moon. He, you know, he was such a, a high energy, enthusiastic guy. Uh, he would have been loving it. You know, the mayor of Rush Street would have been up and down the, the city streets, uh, flying the W banner. Um, this would have been a, a, a magical year, not just for Harry, but you think about the, the history of this franchise, Ronnie Santo, uh, who we, we have lost, and Ernie Banks. But, you know, the, the veteran guys, the older guys still come around. Billy Williams is at the ballpark a lot. Fergie Jenkins we see from time to time. I think uh, all those guys are, are really enjoying this, this current Cub run. Yeah, it's certainly been a special season, and it's neat to see all the different people that come out to the ballpark and, and, and sing in Harry Carey's place still all these years later. Uh, this is the Edward Jones Chatting Cage, your chance to ask questions of favorite players and broadcasters, and we have a fan ready to go now. Fan, tell us where you're from. Go ahead with your name and ask your question of Jim Deshays. I'm from, my name's Alec. I'm from New York. If the... Cubs get to the NLCS, what team do you think they would have the toughest time against the Nationals or the Dodgers? Uh, NLCS, toughest competition. Wow. You know, it's funny because a, a few weeks ago, I would have definitely said Nationals, uh, but in terms of health, uh, they're trending down. The Dodgers seem to be getting healthy. Clayton Kershaw is back, pitching at a very high level. Rich Hill seems to have moved beyond that blister problem. So all of a sudden, their pitching that has been such an issue all summer long, uh, stronger probably than it's been all year. Uh, and the Nationals, it doesn't look like Strasburg is going to be available. Certainly for the first round, he remains a question mark. Uh, Ramos uh, down with the injury. He's out for the year. That's got to hurt them a little bit. Um, yeah, flip a coin, though. They're two very talented, uh, deep teams. Uh, I, I can't say one over the other. Jim, we've talked a lot about all the great players on this Cubs team as we go back to the MLB Fans app. Baseball is Life wants to know, who is your favorite Cubs player to watch? Favorite Cub player to watch is, well, there's two. Uh, Pitching-wise, it's Kyle Hendricks. Uh, because he doesn't possess the 96-mile-an-hour fastball, rarely touches 90, uh, but he has great command and is such a thoughtful pitcher, a real craftsman, um, uh, not unlike Greg Maddox. Uh, so I think anybody that ever pitched really enjoys watching that. And the other one is Javi Baez, who um, is a magician on the field. He plays all over the diamond. He makes one spectacular play after another. Uh, there's a lot of flash in his game, uh, and, and he brings a lot of excitement to the ballpark every night. And he's cut down on the walks, too, so he's more exciting at the plate, too. When he first came up, I remember it was home run or bust, but now he's kind of cut down on that. Certainly an exciting player. I love that you went with two of the lesser, not the superstars, on this Cubs team. As we continue along with the Edward Jones chatting cage, we have another fan ready to step in. Fan, go ahead, tell us your name, where you're from, and ask your question. I'm Ryan from Columbus, Ohio. I was just wondering if how Joe Madden compares to other managers you've played for and covered. Uh, as good as any, probably better than any I, I've been around. Uh, he, if from from my standpoint as a broadcaster, he's he's the best. He's very forthright, very frank with us. Gives us great information. Gives us great insight into what he's thinking. Uh, I think he accepts the challenge of being questioned, whether it's by writers post game or by broadcasters pregame, uh, as to why he's doing what he's doing. And he always has a thoughtful response. He's a lot of fun, obviously. Um, so you know, he he stands out in, in my mind. I've been around a lot of good ones. Um, I play for Tom Kelly in Minnesota. He's probably the favorite that I ever played for. Uh, and then as a broadcaster in Houston, uh, Larry Durker and, and Phil Garner stand out. Jim, we talked a little bit about Harry Carey earlier. Back to that theme on, on social media. Squid96 wants to know, who's the best and worst person that you've heard sing, take me out to the ball game? <laughs> um, man, I don't know. Uh, that's a great question. Um, I probably should keep notes when that happens, so I have uh, so I have a ready answer. Uh, we had the cast of Hamilton in just recently, and they knocked it out of the park. They were really good. 
Um, as to the worst, man, there are, there's, there's, there are many. There are many nights um, where it's kind of cringeworthy, but that's what kind of makes it fun. Yeah, and we don't want to insult, we don't want to call out any individuals here. So I think that's a good, uh, good politically correct answer. Um, Professor Neil wants to know on the MLB Fans app, Jim, and this goes back to your Houston days as well. What's your favorite Bill Brown story? Bill Brown, of course, the Astros legendary broadcaster who's saying goodbye to broadcasting this year. Brownie, yeah, my man, uh, great partner. We worked together for 16 years. Absolutely loved working uh, with these working his final game as we speak. Um, I, I don't know if there's one story, but to, to, to Brownie, uh, if you ask around the industry, people will say he's probably the most prepared broadcaster out there. And to give you a, a sense of Brownie, um, we might be on a you know all night flight at three in the morning, flying across the country, and everybody's asleep, and there's one light on, and it's Brownie, and he's got his little scissors out, and he's cutting his newspaper and you know clips and writing notes, uh, getting ready for the next day's game. Uh, I used to just challenge him. I would I would sit there and I go, Hey Brownie, uh, how's so and so doing down at Double A? And he, he would he would know the numbers. He'd know what the guy was hitting or who was having a good year and who wasn't. And, and very few major league uh, broadcasters are going to be that plugged into the entire organization. Yeah, unbelievable from a preparation standpoint. That's great stuff. And as you said, he's calling his last game right now for the Astros before he retires. Him and Vin Scully both saying goodbye to the game. All right, we have another fan ready to go. Fan, go ahead, tell us your name, where you're from, and ask your question for Jim. Hi, I'm Jason from Altoona, Pennsylvania. And my question to you is, what did you, what made you want to become a sports broadcaster? Uh, good question, Jason. Uh, I would say unemployment. Um, <laughs> when, when I got done my playing career, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do next. And to be completely frank with you, I, I basically stumbled into the job in Houston. Larry Durker, who had done it down there for a long, long time, was really good. Um, he got hired as the manager, and I called him to congratulate him because Larry was broadcasting when I was playing there and he's the one that suggested it. He said, you know, you might like my old job. And I didn't think much of it at the time, but uh, a couple months later, I was sitting at home. Uh, I'd been out of the game for a year and a half or so and decided to give the Astros a call to see if they had any interest. And one conversation led to another and uh, I ended up in the booth. And, uh, you know, to be, to be honest, though, I, it was something I'd always uh, thought that I might want to do uh, during my playing career, that if an opportunity ever presented itself uh, to get into broadcasting, that I, that I would jump at it. All right, Jim, we're out of time. Thanks so much for stepping into the cage. Sure, happy to be with you. Thanks for all the great questions. All right, that's going to do it for another edition of the Edward Jones Chatting Cage. Tune in again next time.